Welcome, this is British National Party Television coming to you from Preston in Lancashire. Now we're here today to report on the process of Islamification that is taking place in this area as it is taking place in towns and cities across the land. In the 19th century, Preston grew extremely wealthy on the back of the textile trade. Mills, like the one you see behind me, manufactured cloths that came to dominate the world market in that commodity. However, people have been living here long before the 19th century. Indeed, archaeologists have found evidence to show that there was a human settlement here 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. And the reason for that is that this area has always been the best place between the sea and the Pennines to cross the River Ribble. So anybody travelling up and down the western side of the country is naturally funnelled through this spot, which means people came to settle here in order to exploit the opportunities that arose from this footfall. In the Middle Ages, the area became very popular with religious people. There were many churches and monasteries here, which is why Preston got its name, Preach Town. However, throughout this long history, there has been one constant, that is up until very recently, and that is the ethnicity of the people who lived here. Almost exclusively, the people who inhabited this area have been of North European stock. Indeed, when I went to school in the 1960s in Preston, everybody in that school, all the pupils and all the staff look like me. Now that might conjure up a particularly unpleasant mental image for some people, but it's true. Everybody had the same bone structure and the same skin tones. But unbeknownst to us, it was at that time that the first Muslim invaders had started to infiltrate our body politic. These early invaders kept themselves very much to themselves and nobody really knew they were here. And neither did we know that they were establishing a network of mosques. And if you follow me now, I'll show you why nobody noticed that this net network was being established. The building you see behind me is a mosque and it's very similar to those early mosques. It's nothing more than a terraced house converted into a religious building. And of course, when we got all these and, and they were scattered across Preston, indeed there's still quite a few mosques like this in Preston. Nobody really noticed, nobody took any notice and nobody realised exactly what was happening. It wasn't until the late 1970s that we got our, per our first purpose-built proper mosque and we'll go now and have a look at that. Now behind me you see Preston's first purpose-built mosque. Now when this was con first constructed it caused a bit of a sensation, it was a curiosity. People came from miles around to have a look at it but nobody felt particularly threatened. Still, it was still a very rare occasion to see a Muslim and it's not a particularly big mosque so nobody uh, was really concerned. However, once we got this mosque, they started cropping up like mushrooms. We got this one, we got this one, and this one. And here, now behind me, you see the latest addition to Preston's network of mosques. However, when plans were submitted to the council for permission to build this mosque, the people of Preston were getting sick of Muslims and their mosques, and there was a general uproar. Meetings were held in schoolyards, articles written in the newspapers, let leaflets distributed around the area, an MP even gave a speech. And because of the fuss, the Preston Council decided to convene a special session just to discuss this one issue. At the end of that session, a vote was taken and the council virtually unanimously agreed to not grant permission to build this mosque. However, there are some very influential Muslims living in Preston 
and many believe strings were pulled because it was not long after the vote was taken that a man turned up from London and he disregarded the views of the planning department. He overruled the vote in the council and he took absolutely no notice of the concerns of the indigenous people of Preston and he told us all that the Muslims must be able to do as they please and build the mosque. And as you can see, that is exactly what is happening. Now, this episode is rather emblematic of how Muslims have come to treat the indigenous people of Preston. They just ride roughshod over their concerns. Not only do they, not only have they completely rejected our values, our culture and our way of life and live according to their own lights. But many believe they have embarked on a deliberate campaign to try and remove non-Muslims from the central area of Preston. It's not many months ago, last June, uh, when a mob of Muslims greeted air cadets as they left the barracks not far from here. Now we're talking air cadets here. This is children between the age of 10 and 15. And they were immediately subjected to what the police admitted was a racist rant of insults and threats. However, as far as we know, nobody has yet been arrested or prosecuted for this crime. A few months before that, a policeman was on foot patrol in the area when he was attacked by a gang of youths who beat him up and put him in hospital. Now, the police have refused to confirm or deny that these young men were Muslims. But as the reports that we have received say that they were Muslims, indeed the reports that we have received say that one of these Muslims belonged to one of the influential Muslim families of Preston. Now we've taken a particular interest in this issue and have repeatedly asked the police for what progress was being made. And the standard response we got up to date was uh, that following the incident, seven men were arrested. They've been released on bail uh, pending further investigation. However, a couple of weeks ago, we got uh, a different answer and I'll just read that out to you because it's of some interest. The offence of, of assault remains undetected as at the 27th of February 2014 and is not subject to ongoing or further investigation. That is, is not subject to ongoing or further investigation at this time. No charges have been brought in connection with this crime, although one individual was charged with the theft of the officer's radio. So it would appear that Muslims can even beat up police officers with impunity. But of course, most of the incidents that occur are of a much lower level than this. For instance, a work colleague of mine had recently bought an uh, army assault jacket and he was wearing this jacket when he went into a corner shop round here to buy some cigarettes. However, the Muslims refused to serve him because they said they were offended by the jacket. If you walk round here of a night, it's quite likely that you'll be glared at and stared at. In fact, it's quite likely that'll happen during the day. You might even receive the odd insult or threat. If you live round here, it's quite possible you'll be subject to uh, vandalism and low-level harassment. And what, what occurs is it just becomes unpleasant for non-Muslims to live in the area. So they're leaving the area. And as a consequence, churches are closing down and being boarded up. Pubs are being sold off and converted into dwellings. And uh, shopping precincts are beginning to look like Islamic bazaars. So the upshot is that an Islamic enclave run entirely separately from the rest of Preston is being established here. And I'd like to conclude by posing a question. It's a rhetorical question. 
But I'd like our viewers to consider this. How could our leaders have failed us more? How could they have done worse? Not only have they allowed millions of our most ancient and dangerous enemy to invade our islands, but when they treat us like something that you would scrape off the bottom of your shoe, they do absolutely nothing about it. How could they have done worse? Thank you for watching.